Christensen said to me, Felix, don't you have that list of those kind of secret hidden gems that are brilliant businesses that are growing fast? And I said, I think I do. Shall we share it with people? That's what this video is all about. I'm not just going to give you the stocks that Winston sniffed out. I'm actually going to walk you through how I find them, what the criteria are, so you can do this on your own. So you are you learn, right? That's what the whole point is. Before we get cracking, Winston's also running a live trading training on Tuesday. And he's going to show you exactly how we've done this little feat. We did 105% last year. We did 126% the year before. We did so far this year, we're up about $4,800 on a 30K portfolio, winning 75% of our trades, 74 and we've actually got, I just took a screenshot of this. I've got about $5,000 of profits that we haven't realized yet. We're going to take some profits today. Today's a profit taking day, isn't it, Winston? He says, yes. Can you see the nose? <laughs> there is a little nose down here. Uh, so to get access to that and literally the three step system that I use every single week, that's fully automated once we set up the trades, Come and join me on this live trading training. It's completely free of charge. All you're going to do is save yourself a seat and show up. Time, Felix Rensselaer slash webinar. Let's get cracking with stock number eight, Nemechek. And what the heck is Nemechek? Well, let me run you through a few data points first before I tell you what Nemechek is. Cash flow is gr glorious. It's growing insanely. Well, it's the stock's gone up a lot. We don't actually like that, but it's beautifully profitable and it's not cheap. No, it's not. Great businesses rarely are. But what do they actually do? Well, Nemechek SE provides solution in architecture, engineering, construction, media, entertainment markets in Germany, rest of Europe. The, that, that, that's the way the Germans look at Europe. There's Germany and then there's the rest of Europe. <laughs> They're not actually German. They are. F oh, no, they are German. I thought they were Finnish. Okay, it's Deutsch. Yeah, I'm German, so I think I'm allowed to take the piss, aren't I? Uh, basically, they build software for infrastructure, big projects, 3D modeling, all that kind of good stuff. And gross profit for a software business is sort of meh, but that's because they work on large projects, I would say. Revenue is approaching a billion dollars. Profit of that is 181 million. That's a pretty nice margin. And this is what I love about this. Return on invested capital, 19%. Profits going up 10% a year. I always take these two numbers, and this is my real like rule of thumb kind of calculator, 10 to 19%. I think the stock should increase a year. Not every single year. The world doesn't work in a, in a linear fashion. It's not like, you know, Winston e eating a bowl of food. That happens in a pretty linear fashion. Um, one, one, one breath and it's all gone. But look at the numbers. So just under a billion in revenue and free cash flows, 265 million. So that's a good business. It's a well-run business. They get paid in advance on subscriptions and they haven't got any issues with investing or having to raise money because they're just bringing in money. Right now, I haven't got earnings per share data here, but I've got revenues, which they're beating quite nicely, mostly. Uh, so they're doing a good job there in terms of consistency. And this is a screenshot from the actual website. And some of you might like this. They've just increased their dividend to 48 cents a share. So that comes in as just under 5% dividend yield on top of that. So continued highly profitable double-digit growth for the from fiscal year 2024. And uh, that's the target. So it's just one of those compounders that slowly and gradually makes more and more and more and more money. Here is one you might have heard of. A lot of these you never have heard of. So I'd encourage you to look into deeper into these, you know. Paycom. And what does Paycom do? Well, it sort of says it on the tin, doesn't it? But let's look at the numbers first. Cash flow, meh. It's growing very nicely. The stock's hasn't gone up, brilliant, and it's insanely profitable and it's relatively cheap, which is what we love, right? So what do they do? Well, it's sort of HR management, boring stuff, software as a service to small and medium-sized companies in the US, 
data analytics, employment life cycles, recruitment to retirement, talent acquisition, applicant tracking, candidate tracker, background checks, tax credit services, time and labor management, attendance. God, if you work in HR life, must be so boring. Oh my God, kill myself right now. But obviously this is dull as shit and somebody's going to do it. And these guys do it pretty well. How do I know that? Because they are able to get away with an 86% gross profit margin, which means the moat is either insanely wide or HR managers are so bored they're just happy to overpay for software. I bet it's quite hard to replace the software once you've installed it because it'll have all your data and all your employees and all your applicants and it's tedious to set it up again so nobody changes. Revenue is heading for 2 billion, 340 million real profits. None of that adjusted EBITDA bollocks. Return on invested capital is 26%. You know, that means you give them $100 as a shareholder and every single year they create another $26 out of that. Four years, money back. Right. So you take these into account. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my old sort of yardstick, 10 to 26 percent increase. Is the stock therefore insanely expensive? Well, let me just show you one more number. Free cash flow is almost 300 million, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So nice free cash flow, which is what we love. And management is a freaking machine. They're beating Wall Street analysts every single freaking quarter on, on, on profits, which is exactly what we want. It's trading at 25 times PE. At the moment where we are in the market cycle, that's actually not particularly expensive. But if you thought that their growth rate was going to just collapse from this year's 32% to 14, 6, 13, and so on, even then that multiple will drop below nine by 2032, which is eight years away, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So probably within 10 years, this thing will have a five to six X multiple if you were to buy it right now. I'm not telling you to buy it right now, but you get the idea, right? So it's not super expensive. Now here's another one. Have you heard of this one? Qualys, Qualys. I don't even know how you pronounce that. Cash flow, mm -mm. growth health, wonderful. Price is not going up a lot. We love it. And it's profitable as, I don't know, selling drugs. Relative value is actually pretty good. So not particularly expensive, which is why I dug it up. And what do they do? Cybersecurity. Let's just summarize it as that. External attack surface management. Cybersecurity. Vulnerability. Patch management. Multi-vector endpoint detection and response. What does this mean? Context extended detection and response. What? I mean, really? But they do have Qualys Total Cloud. I, I, I don't honestly know what that means, but I do know that cybersecurity is a big space and I do know that everybody gets hacked like mad and they're based in California, which is generally where you want to be, founded in 1999. And this is what I love gross profit margins of 80% plus. That's the sweet spot for software. Revenue is only half a billion. So they are, they're pretty small. They're like, but this big, really. They have very nice margin there in terms of profits. Um, and return on invest capital is 37%. Cha-ching. Profits growing at 10, 11% a year. So again, very, very, very nice numbers. And out of the 550 million in revenue, how much is free cash flow? Oh, almost half, almost half. They, they basically have a room in their headquarters. It's just gold bullion and coins and dollar notes and management takes a dip in the mornings. That's basically what you can do if half the money you um, you collect as revenue comes in as free cash flow. So it's obviously they're getting paid in advance, subscription-based, great business. Management is a is a machine once again beating analyst expectations for the last eight quarters here. Okay, there was $33,000 of revenue. What does that matter on 144 million? So this, you can ignore those small numbers. That's just really irrelevant. They've been insanely consistent with delivering. And is it expensive? Well, trading at 30 times PE. Like once again, if you believed the moribund, depressed, miserable analysts on Wall Street with their little spreadsheets, and they said that, Year-on-year -year growth is going to tank to 8 9%. Even that would bring you over 10 years, bring you down to a 10x multiple because the P is fixed as now, right? Whereas the earnings, the profits will keep going up. 
it could potentially be a lot more than that. So the stock could get a lot better. And that's why a lot of stocks at the moment are trading at these 25, 30 times multiples or, or higher, 50, 60, 70, because people believe in the growth story, right? Now look at this one. Intel Parfum is what? Well, it is a company that makes what? Perfume. Cash flow is wonderful. It's growing like mad. The stock price has not gone up. Merde, they say, but that's actually good for us. And it's wonderfully profitable. You're probably being ripped off by some Parisian chap like mad, right? So the stock isn't made very expensive either. Very good numbers. And Interparfum SA is indeed French. La Grande Nation says, buy my stock. And what do they do? They design, manufacture, and distribute ready-to-wear jewelry, accessory, or accessory houses in France and internationally, well, perfumes, right? So if you've got a brand, you know, that makes something like Jimmy Choo shoes, who doesn't want to smell like shoes? Well, you go to these guys, right? That's kind of the business. I mean, look at the brands they've got. Karl Lagerfeld, Kate Spade, Lanva, Mont Blanc, Montclair. Montclair has perfume, really? Uh, Funkleaf and Arpels, it's that, it's that slightly, you know, musky after ski stench. Uh, I guess they came up with something a bit better, DuPont and so on. So these guys have been around since 1982 and are a subsidiary of Intel Perfumes Inc., uh, which I guess is a US-based headquarter. But look at that. Gross profit margins are pretty extraordinary for someone. They design and manufacture, right? And then they distribute it through license holders. So they don't really have to get their hands dirty on the marketing side. They just go, uh, I made the, the parfum for Karl Lagerfeld. Uh, what do you want? You know? And then you've got you to pay them an arm and a leg for it and, 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 you know, three legs perhaps. So just under a billion revenue. Return on capital is 15% and it's growing at 9%. So not like extraordinary, not software. It's not SaaS. No, they're making smelly stuff in little fancy bottles that they sell to people at very, very, very high margins. So it's a, it's a, an idea for a real diversifier. This is not going to be move with NVIDIA. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different sector altogether and there are French people involved, which is, means it's already very, very different. <laughs> Revenue, 882 million and 85 million free cash flow, only 10%. Um, what do they do with all the money? I don't know. They have, um, you know, long lunches, mistresses, all that kind of stuff. Oh, can we throw some more stereotypes in here? Offend our three French viewers. Uh, I hope so. But no, it's a, it's it looks it looks like a very well run business, uh, very low debt. I don't know what they did here with cash from financing, one hundred thirty million down. They clearly did something, acquisition or something like that. I, I would look that up if I were you. I haven't dug that deep yet, but they are getting money in from their cash, which is good. Interest rates have gone up, uh, so overall, yeah, I think it's a, it's an interesting business now. We haven't got a lot of data here on them. We haven't got any EPS data because uh, in France, it is not polite to talk about profit. Uh, and therefore, they won't. Um, are we going to get banned from this channel by being incredibly offensive? I, I See, I aim to be an equal equal opportunities offender. You see, I, I aim to offend all kind of strata of society and countries equally. And hopefully that way I'm either forgiven or loathed by everybody. We'll see what happens. Cash flow is glorious. And this is, of course, OTC markets. And I've talked about them before, but... I just think it's, so what is ODC Markets? Well, it's a, it's a mini stock exchange for all the stuff that isn't listed on the New York Stock Exchange because it's tedious and expensive and not everybody qualifies. They're growing okay. Stock price hasn't gone up a lot. That's great. But look how profitable they are, right? It's brilliant. It's not super expensive either. So yes, they, um, you know, pink sheets and all of that. That's all part of it. If you watch all those films, that, this is what these guys operate and they basically make a small listing fee and a small transaction fee. Uh, they've been, were founded in 1904. Been around for a while. So it's fair to say they're likely to be around for a long time. Gross profit margins, 58% is, yeah, so so. Revenue is only 100 million. Why? Because they only get a teeny tiny percentage, but it's actually gone up quite a lot of late. 27 million profit, which is pretty decent, 27%. Even I can do that maths. And return on the best capital is 59 freaking percent. That's like... Wow, right? The Frenchies are going, oh, how is this possible? Um, insane, right? Profits going up 9% a year after 120 years on the market. That's actually also pretty good. So I 
I think it's one of those little niche businesses that most people don't look at. And free cash flow is 31 million. That's a 31% free cash flow margin. So pretty good stuff. No debt to speak of. Got 38 million cash lying around, you know. And yeah, last bit of quarter data we have here wasn't wasn't glorious, but then probably not many analysts follow a stock that small. So I don't know how useful this is. We're trading at 21 times 2024 earnings. It's only, there are only two analysts. Uh, the others are, have already died. They were aged 120 and 118. Followed it since the day where they were born. So we don't have a lot of data on this in that sense. But you know, 21x, but that return on invested capital could be interesting. Now, what about this one? Text. And I thought, text? What, they invented the SMS or something and they're still around? Almost, actually, almost. I'll show you in a second. So relative value C is actually one of the best numbers we ever get. Price momentum C means the stock hasn't gone up a lot. Keep free cash flow is glorious. It's growing insanely and it's more profitable than, I don't know, you know dope dealing. So brilliant stuff, really. And what do they do? Live chat. The product is literally called live chat. I thought there must be some competitors in that space. I mean, I've literally used two or three different live chats in the last 12 months and switched around. But these guys are Polish. I don't know any Polish stereotypes. The only thing I can think of is potato vodka, really. So if you're Polish, please feed me some Polish stereotypes and I'll be able to more appropriately make fun of your people in the next video. So yeah, they literally do live chat. That little thing that pops up at the bottom of a lot of websites, often it's powered by live chat. I know, catchy name, right? But the gross profit margin is 82%. So Clearly, people are sticking around. Revenue is only 90 million, not a lot, but it's gone up quite a lot. And half of that, more than half of that, is cha-ching pure profit, pure unadulterated, unadulterated potato vodka. You know, that's where it's all going. Return on invested capital, 127%. I, you never really see triple digit, number, digit numbers. So those polls know what they're doing. They're lacing it with something and earnings are going up 12% a year. So you'd think the stock would be insanely expensive with the growth and the return on invested capital. Now, I actually screenshotted from their last presentation a few numbers. So they've got help desk, live chat, and chatbot. Those are the three products. And live chat is basically the whole business. That grew year over year 27%, quarter over quarter 15%, and then the newer sectors are growing much more rapidly, which is typically what happens. You introduce a new product, it's easier to sell it than if you've already been selling it for a, for a lot. And they pay a dividend. Yes, they do. And those dividends have also gone up massively. So if you, the kind of person who likes a dividend, this could be something that could be interesting as well. Now, financials, yeah, tiny revenue, but look, 50 million to 73 to 91. So they're definitely doing something right. And they're not just doing that with cash burn. They've paid off all their debt, no more debt. And they now have 40 million free cash flow on 50 million EBITDA and 90 million revenue. That's pretty extraordinary. Right? So I'd like to meet these chaps. They're running a really, really nice startup there. Uh, so Check it out. Um, I haven't got a lot of earnings data on this, but revenue, they're beat by 10% on the last quarter against expectations. And should we do one more? Too many? Too many? Should we just stop right here? Winston, what do you think? One more? Winston says one more. Sembler Scientific. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Cash flow is out of this freaking world. It's growing very nicely. The stock has not gone up. A bad price momentum rating means your stock is like gone, you know, not a lot. That's glorious. Profit health, cha-ching. And it's the cheapest thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> that doesn't mean you should put all your money in it, but use it as a basis for some research. So what do they do? Well, they produce QuantaFlow, a four-minute in-office blood flow test that enables healthcare providers to use blood flow measurements as part of the examinations for patients' vascular condition. So they basically test, you're going to get a heart attack. That's essentially what the product is. They set up in 2007. And people who might get heart attacks are willing to pay a lot for the test. 90% gross profit margin. I mean, 
almost almost like Visa. Is it Visa card levels? I think it might be. It's new, 68 million revenues, not a lot. A third of that is profit. Return on invested capital is 30%. Profits growing at 20% a year. They're doing something right. Their product is also, again, there's a presentation I just snapped from their investor portal. So here's the little device. You, I imagine you stick your finger into it and then it bites and you go, ah, for, for, for five, five minutes. But the FDA has given it marketing clearance. There's a patent on it and you get a more accurate result apparently than the, you know, you know when they do that, that blood thing around your arm, which apparently is also hard to do for certain people. I don't know. Not really sure why mobility or how you can get to them and that kind of thing. So this is a little easier. And they are basically saying there are 80 million people in the US who are either old or decrepit or falling apart and therefore are at risk of cardiovascular disease. And they see a massive whopping total addressable market there. I like technology, little measurement devices like this. All you got to do is get them into enough, the hands of enough hospitals and doctors and nurses and testing people. And they also do it. They come around and they can do it from, from at home and all that kind of stuff because it's so easy to use. And once people have bought the kit, they've paid the subscription for the software, they're going to stick around because what's the point in changing? They like it. Everyone, you know, has had their little finger bitten. So it's a, I think it's an interesting business. Teeny tiny, obviously. So bear that in mind. More risk with teeny tiny businesses. And guess what? That's where we're at. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. If you want to have a look at how we make money like this, then come and join me at felixfrenz.org slash webinar and I will teach you our three-step, very simple system. It's too, totally suitable for beginners. I assume zero knowledge. I mean, Winston runs it and we're going to have some fun. We'll learn. You walk away with all my techniques and a bunch of materials and, and, and everything else and you'll be a smarter investor, trader for it. I thank you for watching. Take care. But right now, I would say Tesla is for like People with a really long horizon, I think it's looking more and more attractive, the less and less it does. But I think there might be a little bit more negative news coming out here. And that's not what the chart's saying, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. So I think there's no real urgency here. If you zoom out.